I am in Mumbai today and saw this old beautiful clock. But it has strange numbers. They look more like letters than numbers. I am so used to looking at my phone clock. It shows time like this. This numeral style shows 1 to 12 on my clock. I can even set it for 1 to 24. Both the clocks tell me time. But do these numbers look the same? No, they are not. They are definitely not the same. The one on my smartwatch is represented using Hindu Arabic numerals. And the time in this clock tower is represented using Roman numerals. Let's look back and find out. Actually, the story of these numbers goes long back. Almost 3000 years back. As the name suggests, this system of representing numbers like this was developed by Romans. Here's how this number system works. The Romans used alphabets to represent numbers. If we compare with our present numbers, then letter I represents 1. Letter V represents 5. Letter X represents 10. Letter L represents 50. Letter C represents 100. Letter D represents 500. And M, 1000. So, we know one. Let's try to write number 2 and 3 in Roman numerals. It will be I, I and I, I, I. That is 2 times I and 3 times I. How about 4? Is it I, 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 I? You can see in this clock, right? No, you can't see. There are some basic rules that Romans followed. A letter cannot be repeated more than three times. And specifically the letters V, L and D are never repeated. So, how to represent four then? Hmm, well, for that, we need to write the letter for 5 and subtract 1 from it. If we write a smaller numeral i before a greater numeral v, then it means we are subtracting the smaller number i from the greater number v. We can subtract a smaller numeral from a greater numeral only once. Also, letters v, l, D can never be subtracted from any greater numeral. What about numbers that are not on the clock? Say 40? How would we represent this number in Roman numerals? We take 50 as L and 10 as X. Yes, now if we can subtract 10 from 50, the answer is 40. The same way L minus X is XL which is number 40. Now, coming back to the clock, how about number 6? For this, we have numerals 5 and we need to add 1 to it. So, we write the smaller numeral i after the greater numeral v. Writing a smaller numeral after a bigger one means an addition of the numbers. Romans developed numeral system 3000 years ago. What if we were to represent 3000 using Roman numerals. We represent 1000 as M. So 3000 will be 1000 plus 1000 plus 1000. Hence, 3000 will be M, M, M. How would we represent, let's say, 1500? We represent M as 1000, D as 500. So, 1500 will be 1000 plus 500. Hence, 1500 will be represented as M, D. Now, if you notice, the individual values of these letters add up to form greater numbers. The clock tower was built in 1878. Let's convert 1878 into Roman numbers. We represent 1000 as M. 800 can be written as 500 plus 100 plus 100 plus 100. So, it will be 500 as D and 100 as C. Adding to form 800, it is D, C, C, C. Taking 70, it can be written as 
L plus X plus X. So it will be L X X. And 8 is written as V I I I. Now adding them all it will be M D C C C L X X V I I I. The Romans used this number system to count small quantities. As numbers get larger, it becomes increasingly difficult to write them, as we did for 1878, right? As the world changed, the more convenient system has been adopted by most of the world. These days, we see clocks that show time digitally and in other numeral systems. But despite the digital boom, most tower clocks in the world still uses the Roman numbers to say the time. They have stood the test of time. Next time you are visiting a railway station, just look out for the old clock like this. You'll see Roman numerals waiting for you. And remember, we stay curious. <laughs>